was silent for the first 30 minutes of our therapy session. Out of desperation, I asked him what he'd wish for if his life could be different. The silence lingered. And then slowly he raised his head just high enough to meet my eyes under the ragged edge of his hoodie. And he quietly said, I'd wish for a lot of money. He paused and then said, no, I wouldn't wish for anything. You see, if I wish for a lot of money, everyone would know my dad stole it from the bank. No, ma'am, I wouldn't wish for anything. He was 16, on the verge of being expelled from school again, and had endured more heartache and pain in his short 16 years than anyone should know in a lifetime. You see, he couldn't even wish his life could be better. For if he did, surely something bad would follow. You see, for that boy, that life experience had been hardwired like no other, over and over again. And when you're 16 years old and you can't even imagine your life can be better, it's hard to find the value of school. He couldn't even find hope. I've thought about the meaning of that brief interaction and what to do about it for more years than I'd like to admit. Clearly, no 16-year-old boy should be without hope for a better future. And yet, the unfortunate reality is that he's not alone. In 2021, over 35% of North Dakota high school students reported feeling persistent sadness and hopelessness. And nearly one out of five indicated they'd seriously considered dying by suicide within the past 12 months. Furthermore, our nation's leading experts in pediatric health recently issued an urgent warning, declaring the children's mental health crisis so dire that it warrants a national emergency. The strategies needed to comprehensively address this behavioral health crisis are complex, systemic, and easily overwhelming. Our teachers are talking about this as well. I mean, right, you talk to any of them, they're gonna tell you countless stories of homelessness, inability to pay attention in class, absenteeism. Our teachers are pleading for our help this behavioral health crisis is not simple to solve. It's going to take all of us. And one strategy that holds significant promise is the development of community schools. We know not all students come to school ready to learn. Challenges such as hunger, access to early childhood education and traumatic life experiences absolutely can get in the way of academic progress. And for years now, our schools have been trying to address these complex challenges on their own with limited resources and quite frankly, limited success. A community school invest in developing strong community partnerships so our schools don't have to navigate these challenges alone. A community school is simply a place. It's a school building and a set of partnerships that serve as a hub to that neighborhood or community. And with the goal of helping students make academic progress, community schools build strong community partnerships to provide a coordinated and comprehensive set of supports to students and their families. Sounds simple, maybe even familiar. And yet all too often we encounter, yeah, it's just easier to do it ourselves. Schools educate, 
community agencies are busy chasing their missions, and very rarely are services for children well-coordinated or delivered collaboratively. Are community partnerships easy? <laughs> Not exactly. Building strong school community partnerships certainly requires an investment to successfully manage time, turf, and trust. Yet these partnerships will ultimately leverage additional expertise, workforce, and much needed funding streams. Over the past four years, there's been a coordinated effort to develop, test, and spread the community school model in North Dakota. And four essential components for success have emerged. Leadership, dedicated time, partners, and commitment to continuous improvement. Number one, leadership. The biggest predictor of adopting the community school model is strong school leaders committed to meeting the needs of the whole child. Leaders who understand tiered supports and the importance and value of partnering with agencies to assist with those that are the most specialized and intensive for students and their families. Number two, dedicated time. What if every school building had a designated staff person whose sole responsibility was to establish and maintain this set of partnerships to directly benefit the students of that building? What a relief to our teachers. Imagine that, the gift of that, the gift of time. And better yet, the improved access for our students to more timely and effective supports. Partners. Our schools need partners who are willing to work differently. If we're going to get this right, we have to meet people where they're at. And schools are one of those places. Schools need partners with shared values, with the humility to learn from one another, and with clear communication regarding roles and responsibilities. Additionally, our schools need partners who can collect data and share outcomes so we can evaluate our return on investment. Number four, continuous improvement. We know it's unlikely that we get anything exactly right the first time, which is why a commitment to continuous improvement is critical. Building community schools requires intentional planning based on the unique needs of that building testing the identified solutions, checking the results, and doing more of what works and letting go of what doesn't. In addition to these four components for success, large systemic change, like building community schools, requires financial resources. Funding for the infrastructure to support and maintain community schools statewide. Money for dedicated time in our school buildings. And yet, I'm not entirely convinced this is about more money. But perhaps a comprehensive review and potential reallocation of our current financial resources. Furthermore, leveraging additional community partnerships will undoubtedly improve access to new funding streams to benefit our schools, like commercial insurance, Medicaid, and private foundation dollars. Adopting the community school model is achievable. There are select schools and community partners in North Dakota demonstrating this right now. And if done well, community schools will improve access to services and supports for our students that need them the most which will lead to improved student health, academic progress, family engagement, and importantly, teacher job satisfaction 
and retention. You know, I never saw that boy again. He was court mandated to attend therapy and three days after our first session, he was moved to a residential facility hundreds of miles away. His words that day weigh heavy on me and the defeat in his eyes, haunting. What if our system, our community, could have recognized his struggle earlier and intervened with timely and effective supports for him and his family? How might his life be different? Zell Miller once said, when a child has no hope, a nation has no future. The community school model is just one strategy that can help North Dakota restore hope for our students that simply cannot find it any other way. Thank you.